Tanzania's ruling party, the Chi Mapanzuzi, will win the country's presidential and parliamentary elections, despite a challenge from an opposition coalition trying to end the governing party's 54 years in power. Opinion polls and analysts have forecast a presidential victory for the candidate of the governing CCM, John Makafuli, but many expect the party's parliamentary majority to be significantly reduced after opposition parties united behind a single candidate for the first time. Despite concerns that the vote may not be free and fair, international officials say that the turnout in the country's elections has been high and that there has been little violence at the polls despite fears of conflict. We're on the ground with 141 uh, observ observers all over the country and we've been uh, observing opening of the, of the polling stations, of course. We saw 46 openings today. Out of those 46, 100% opened in time. We saw peaceful starting of the vote, uh, organized according to the rules. The opposition accused the governing CCM of using state institutions to rig the elections and intimidate its supporters, something the party and the government deny. Any dispute over the election outcome could raise tensions in a nation which has been relatively stable since it gained independence in 1961. Well, now joining me to discuss the situation in Tanzania is Sheikh Mohammed Issa, who's editor of Iman, the newspaper in Dar es Salaam. Um, Sheikh, welcome to the programme. Um, tell us what the sort of atmosphere is like on the ground now. This sounds like it's been a, a peaceful election. Is that true? Yeah, largely the first part of this election, it has been uh, strangely peaceful as compared to the, the last elections. Uh, but now turning to the second part of the elections, which is the returning of the votes, uh, there happens to be some scaffolds and unrest here and there between police and youth uh, in Zanzibar Island and uh, in some uh, towns and regions, and especially in Dar es Salaam as well. But uh, comparatively, this has been a more peaceful uh, elections and as far as the campaigns were conducted. The police behaved well. The media was not biased. And uh, we hope that the last... Now, the opposition is saying that uh, there has been electoral malpractice by the governing party. Is that true, do you think? Uh, yeah, we cannot say it's true, but these allegations stems up due to the fact that that the Electoral Commission is not impartial one. You know, the members of the Commission are, are appointed by the ruling party government, and this being the, the situation, you cannot, you, you know, you, you cannot rule out in a, a suspicion of being some misplaced practices on election rigging, but you cannot foresee say that this has happened. This is becoming more and more pronounced is the time for announcing of the the election results in parties is being delayed more than the uh, 24 hours promise commission. But uh, of course, in African countries, democracies are young, and therefore this kind of election malpractices cannot be ruled out. And do the election monitors that we heard from in that clip, those were European Union election monitors, uh, are there enough of them? Uh, to really be able to assess clearly um, what's happening in the in the election, they said they'd monitored the opening of 48 uh, polling booths. That doesn't sound like an awful lot. Certainly not, because this country is huge. You know, it's uh, some nine. And forty thousand square square miles. You know, it's as big. Is maybe Germany and Holland and uh, maybe Switzerland and the other countries there uh, joined together. So you cannot have just a number of 140 international observers and the terrain being very uh, not favorable and the communication to the interior part of the country is still very rude. And therefore, you cannot say that they can monitor it well. In towns, you know, and uh, some nearby areas, they can go and visit. And what they see really it, it, it obscures them from what really happens deep 
into the, the, the country interior party. Therefore, we, we cannot say that the, the, they suffice. The number is co compared to the area of this country is significantly very minimal. So just give us a little bit of background. Um, we said in the clip there that the ruling party has been in power for 54 years. Hasn't exactly been winning free and fair elections for 54 years, has it? Uh, but really, we can say that if uh, elections, multi-party election, uh, has been around only, this is the, the fifth uh, general elections uh, since the reintroduction of multi-party. But before then, 1990 election and, and behind, it was one-party election. The last multi-party election was in 1965. Therefore, uh, after that, the multi party uh, system of governance was abolished by the, by the then Tanu party to be reintroduced back in 1992 and the first multi-party election was 1995. Therefore, you, you cannot say it is 24 years really of multi-party, but the first part was not, it was one party, single party system. But, uh, well, this is, is, is the fifth phase of the government since independence of the country way back in 1961. The first uh, uh, was under the uh, father of this nation, J. Julius Kambaragi Nyerere. The second was under Ali Hassan, uh, under Benjamin William Kappa, and then the current president, Jakaya Mbishu Kikwete. And now we expect to have the fifth phase of the government. And the transition has been largely peaceful, really, comparably to the other African countries. So we, we can be proud, the Tanzanians can be proud that in all the elections, regardless of the, you know, uh, having here and there in how the elections are being uh, carried out, because they are still uh, virtually controlled by one party, the same party which has been around for 54 years. But we can say still we can hand over one government to another peacefully as compared to other countries in the African uh, continent. And this is a, a huge, huge, you know, boost for this country as far as the foreign, uh, foreign investment concerned and also the international relations. A country being peaceful, we can pursue our development uh, mm -hmm. well as well. And uh, most commentators seem to think that the government party will hold on to the opposition will gain will gain some ground. Um, what do you think that will mean for the aftermath of the election, for a democratic government after the election? The, the major theme of this election this time was uh, change. Both the ruling party and the opposition party were uh, advocating for change. But this change was uh, to be interpreted differently. Uh, in the ruling party, they said they want to make changes in the way they run the government. It will no, no longer be u business as usual. But uh, for the opposition party, the uh, change theme was uh, a, a kind of uh, a major overhauling of the system of governance in Tanzania, including fighting for a new constitution of which they, they, they thought that the, the ruling party uh, did not conduct it well. B uh, by these elections, what we are we are seeing now out of the uh, initial results is that uh, the CCM in the parliament is going to be reduced. Well, we don't know to uh, how, what extent, but definitely it's going to be reduced because, you know, the oppositions are gaining uh, constituencies. Uh, and to the local government, this is where it fights more to the ruling party because uh, I was counting up to this moment, the opposition party is going to control about 10 cities or towns in Tanzania, a local government authority. And this is a blow to the ruling party because the way channel development is it will no longer be business as usual, although the opposition party will fail to get the the majority to turn around, you know, the, the parliament and use it as a way to of leverage to the government. Still, CCM will enjoy a majority in the parliament. But we, uh, the situation will improve significantly, having the youth going into the parliament with the new blood, you know, new ideas, and the losing elections, uh, which were around since the first phase government have lost their constituencies, a number of them. So this is going to be, uh, the, the, going to be a great impact 
in the way the government conducts itself after the elections. Okay, Sheikh Mohammed Issa from Dar es Salaam, thanks for bringing us up to date with the Tanzanian elections. But I'm afraid that's all we've got time for on this part of the programme. Do rejoin us for the final part of the show, where we'll be looking at the former British Prime Minister Tony Blair, saying that he's sorry for the mistakes made in the west led invasion of Iraq in 2003. This, of course, is in the light of the impending publication of the long-awaited Chilcot Inquiry. Do stay with us.